Welcome to Playback TRT World's weekly showcase of our best stories from around the globe. Coming up, U.S. President Joe Biden says he expects Russia to invade Ukraine and warns the result would be a disaster for the Kremlin. On the one-year anniversary of taking office, U.S. President Joe Biden said he expects Russia to invade Ukraine and warned of severe consequences. Russia, however, insists it has no intention of doing so and wants to make sure NATO doesn't expand in the region. Spotify has condemned Joe Rogan's past use of racial slurs after clips of the podcaster using the N-word went viral. But while the streaming giant says Rogan's words are inconsistent with its values, it doesn't believe silencing him is the answer. That's despite more than 100 episodes of Rogan's wildly popular podcast being quietly deleted from Spotify in the past few days, following backlash over COVID-19 misinformation. Now, Rogan had apologized for that and has since had to issue another apology for his use of the racial slur. I never used it to be racist because I'm not racist. Right, so while Rogan admits his use of the derogatory term was wrong, he insists it was taken out of context. Now you can be the judge of that. Yeah. Saying the word I well, You've already said D is just like saying Now here's video that circulated on social media of SPD leader Olaf Scholz celebrating. He was met with cheers and applause at his party's headquarters in Berlin. The Academy of Arts and Sciences let us know who's up for an Oscar this year. And the list is not so surprising. Now here's our brief rundown of the front runners for Best Actor Denzel Washington as Macbeth. Let's talk to Screen International film critic Tim Grierson. Tim, thanks so much for joining us today. So what stood out to you out of today's nominations? Um, I think two things. The first is that the shape of the race is sort of what we sort of expected it to be. The Power of the Dog led the nominations with 12 nominations, and right behind it was Dune. The hashtag hijab is our right is trending amid outrage after a girl's school in India banned headscarves. Muslims there say the ban violates their freedom of religion, which is enshrined in India's constitution. Now, netizens around the world are calling for authorities to intervene and ensure religious freedom. So while the popularity of NFTs keeps growing, so does the concern over whether they're safe or not. And now another Turkish artist has fallen victim to NFT thieves. Blogger Jason Bailey, also known as Art Gnome, joins us now. Now he's the founder and CEO of ClubNFT.com, as we can see from your sweatband. I love it. It sounds very, very complicated indeed. Now for the uninitiated, a lot of us are just like, it's just something so new. Do you think the infrastructure is where it should be at for an industry that's just growing so fast? The truth is the space grew way too fast. It went from a bunch of nerds like me that kind of knew what they were doing, but even I, you know, based on my story, got a lot of things wrong. So we've been talking a lot about the consumer. Let's look at the artist's perspective. So in our previous package that played earlier, there was a Turkish man, his name is Yilmaz Aslan Turk. Now his open source account was hacked and he lost money from NFP sales. So in this situation, like who do you even go to? Is There's no NFT police. Where do you go from there? No, you're right. There is no NFT police. It's a Web3 world, right? In the Web3, there's no helpline. The idea is that we don't want to have to rely on a centralized authority to... Um, to be in charge of our assets. We want true ownership. Now on to another story. Novak Djokovic's big win against being deported by the Australian government is starting to look like it's on shaky ground. The tennis player is under investigation for giving false information about his travel history. All right, so The Power of the Dog was actually released on Netflix. Uh, we're seeing a bunch of other films that got nods from um, the Academy, Don't Look Up, and Coda as well. Now, what does this say about the movie industry as we know it? As, you know, looking at more and more uh, movies from streaming services getting nominations at the Oscars. Well, it's interesting because of the 10 Best Picture nominees, three of them are from uh, streaming sites. That's an interesting point that you bring up there. You say streaming is the future, but the Academy favors theatrical releases. But box office attendance figures this year was down, obviously, because of the pandemic in the past two years. So what is your take on that? One of the things that made it interesting in terms of figuring out what was going to get nominated today is that in the past, Oscar prognosticators could look at how a film did theatrically with its box office 
was to sort of determine because sometimes it would be a popularity contest. That's it on this episode of Showcase. Our YouTube channel, Instagram, and Twitter accounts have more from the world of arts and culture. I'm Natasha Hussain. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.